Jill, for for being here with me today. It's been wow, what a ride, huh? It's been incredible. Thank yes. you. Life change. Uh, I saw you in September in New Zealand when I was traveling yeah. there. When and you had when you had your hurricane and floods. Exactly. That was such an incredible experience because I don't know if I told you the story, maybe people don't know this, is that I had a session with somebody who had told me um, that I would be seeing kind of like catastrophes from afar. And I didn't know what that meant. And um, so I left, I left Miami. Uh, there was a hurricane going through Houston at the time. I had to rearrange my Houston trip and I went to, Lo uh, to Los Angeles instead and left to New Zealand from Los Angeles. And I actually booked some sessions that these people were supposed to come to Miami and actually saw them in their own hometown. Wow. And then when I left and got to New Zealand, the hurricane was going through Miami. <laughs> and, I was, and I was listening to it from afar. <gasps> and you weren't yeah, there too. Yeah. I didn't need to be there. And the funny thing is, it, it took a month for me to get back home because I was traveling through New Zealand and Australia. And when I got home, I, I looked at my house and I went, it didn't look that bad. And my neighbors were like, you have no idea how much we fixed your house. Uh, so it was perfect. Did you do it? I said, it just has a few leaves here and there. It wasn't that bad. And I said, we're not going to show you the pictures. Actually, you know what? Perfect timing on your part. It was perfect. It was perfect. So, but it is very windy in uh, Wellington where I was. I thought there was like a hurricane going through there, but it seems that that's the norm. Yeah, it's a windy city. Yes, it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. So when we last talked, oh my God, what a session. Yes, it was very heavy. Um, I actually still find it hard to come to terms with it yes because you don't know because you're not the one being hypnotized i mean i know you've had it right yourself yes. you've had sessions oh, absolutely obviously. absolutely and it takes me months when i've been hypnotized it takes me months to deal with it yeah because but it also has such subtle layering mm -hmm. that you're not aware of what's actually happening right so for example you would ask me a question and my rational mind was going, don't be ridiculous, you can't answer that. You don't know that information. And then your mouth would open up. And then all this information would come out. Mm -hmm. And then while you're actually talking it, you know, talking through to you and giving you the answers, you're still processing it in your rational mind going, where on earth is that coming from? <laughs> but you're still talking. Yes. That, yes. I think, is the, um, yeah, the most surprising, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like, wow, what is actually stored in me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, and then when it was talking about Intergalactic Federation of Light, I'm still finding it very, very difficult to come to terms with that because I don't quite understand it as in, is that Igor guy currently doing that? Is that a future part of my oversoul? Is that a current me in another dimension? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Or all that, of the above. Yes, that, that's all the part that my, yes. although yes it answered a lot of questions, it's now opened up a huge lot of more, more questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it's been, I suppose. Well, you had quite a task that you were given. Yes, and I'm still not quite... Mm, well, the book finished itself in two and a half months. I just sat down and I'd start at eight in the morning and by five and six at night, I was just the whole day, blah, 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 and it was just pouring out. And only when I read back one of the chapters, and it said, we would like to say, and I thought, whoa, 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 hold on, am I, am I multiple personality? Just call me Carrie, right? right. <laughs> and then I realized this actually is being channeled. Yes. And it's a book that they obviously want, right. wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. 
Dad, what did you think about um, me not being able to sleep one night? 1.30 in the morning, I was still awake. And then I went upstairs to where my little computer is, and I said, okay, chaps, what do you want to say? Obviously, you've got something to say that I'm not going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And they said, Ashton Wiley. And I said, who's Ashton Wiley? So I typed in Ashton Wiley. Mm -hmm. And it said a philanthropist from Auckland, New Zealand, who had passed away in 1999. And he'd set up a trust fund. Um, and they work in conjunction with the Auckland University of Medicine on mind, body, spirit genre to see if they can connect. So they give a $10,000 prize to a new manuscript on that mind, body, spirit. Wow. And it's never been allowed to have been um, published or anything. It's got to be new and fresh. And also they give a $10,000 prize annually to the new book that gets launched. So having never written a book or anything and not even knowing what format it's got to be in, at 1.30, I'm typing to them saying, I've just finished a body of work. I think it fits your criteria. Um, you know, let me know. So the guy phoned me two days later and he said to me, how did you hear about us? <laughs> I said, um, actually, I didn't know you existed, but my spirit guide or my guardian angel yeah. told me, and I typed it in and hey, presto, there you were. And he said, oh, wow, Jill, perfect, perfect. Please send it in. So the comp that was in um, end of February. And the competition closes on the 31st of March. So then quickly I had to try and proofread it. Mm -hmm. So everything was like boom, 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 done. Anyway, it's in. So they'll let me know at the end of June if I'm shortlisted. If I'm shortlisted, then I've got to go to Auckland in August um, for the big unveiling prize giving. If I'm not shortlisted, then I think I'm going to have to uh, publish it and just go ahead. Yeah, you have to publish it. It's a it's a good book. It's it's easy to read. It's got a lot of information. <clears throat> it's very motivating. Oh, I think what it was. Yes, it has to be for people to realize they're okay. Yeah, but, it, it was a motivational book. But your hypnosis session, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we here. We here to talk today about when somebody has had a hypnosis session, actually what it does for one. Yes. So let's get straight to the point. Um, yes, I wrote the book in two and a half months. It healed a huge hurt for me with a very close person, mm -hmm. and I get emotional now, still, but. That had sat so heavily, and I didn't realize how heavily it had sat. And we had had this big misunderstanding. But when you told me in that session that, or my higher self, or whatever, but you were the conduit, that that person had hurt me specifically because of the work that I'm going to be doing in the future when governments will try and shut me down and They'll set up rumors and try and make me look like a real baddie. Mm -hmm. And that will also be unjust and untrue. Just as this that I went through was unjust and untrue. And I know you've been through that as well. Mm -hmm. And until you've been through that, you don't realize that awful, awful deep seated hurt. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I saw it for what it was. And there was an act of love and maybe that was his contract with me that he would be coming in and doing this, right? Mm -hmm. And suddenly it just fell away. The angst, the hurt, everything. Amazing. So that's cleared a path for me to just go, Phew, right? On top of that, my marriage is like a honeymoon. It's just, I mean, 35 years of marriage, not every day is fabulous. <laughs> Let's be honest, you've got ups and downs and ups and downs and there are times when you think I'm over this and you just hang in there. But 
when it said in this um, video that, yes, the husband will support you with the work that you're going to be doing. Well, actually it's happening. I said to him the other day, look, I've been offered another job. Um, should I go on and get on and do it? And he said, why, why would you do that? And I said, well, you're carrying the load of, you know, looking after the family financially. I felt I should be contributing at least. He said, don't be ridiculous. You've got work to do. You, you're planning your safaris. You've written your book. Aren't you going to be speaking? Put it out there, you job. <laughs> I'm thinking. <Wow. laughs> so, okay, so that has worked beautifully. That huge deep hurt has worked amazingly. Um, I used to, I think, I think be a huge people pleaser and certainly worry what other people thought of me. Now I'm actually having fun. I think, well, people will always think something of you, won't they? But isn't that up to them? That's their business, not my business. Exactly. That's what they're thinking. I mean, who cares what they're thinking? That's 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 them. But you've you know, got to get to the point. Yeah. yeah. Bring us, actually, yeah. they can think what they like. Exactly. You know, I learned this from my son. My son said a very wise thing one day <clears throat> when he was going through his, uh, his issues, his problems. And I, I mentioned it to him, uh, have you heard, you know, did you read what so-and-so read about, uh, to, uh, wrote about you? <clears throat> and he said to me, Mom, I know who I am. They don't know who I am. So basically, he was telling me, it doesn't matter what they're writing or they're saying or they're thinking about you. It's what matter. It's what you think about yourself that's important. That's it. You know who you are. You don't have to justify it. And that's what I put in that book. Mm -hmm. Right? That internal barometer. That's it. If you're just going externally, you are going up and down, up and down. But if you know who you are and you come from the internal, you'll be just fine. And, that, and then you can start relaxing having fun so because each person is unique and each each one of us is a puzzle piece and we all bring something to the table and when you recognize I am unique because this is what I bring this is this is who I am the way I smile the way I look at people the way I hug them the way I talk this is who I am I'm not gonna change because they don't like the way I do it because they do it differently this is what makes me who I am and when you are being authentic Finally, being authentic, you, that's the magic. But you can't go wrong. You can't then, go wrong because it's you. Yes, and then you know what I loved was that, that um, the bandwidth that you are actually incarnated into, right? Yes, so we that's all, right. So we all come out in that prism of light. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. So you might come out this incarnation vibrating to everything of the color blue. Right which is then not going to vibrate beautifully and harmoniously with a color that is not suitable to that color, complements that color. Yes. So, yes, those people are not going to love you. They're not going to hate you, but there's not going to be that instant connection. And then when you realize that, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. And now after your session, with the multi-layering of all these people who get hypnotized of the Igors or the Martians or the mermaids, you know, whoever they are. So how, how, how could anybody ever judge anybody ever again? Because that's not who they are. That's not who they are. That's the role they're playing in this body at this time, in this time space. Yes, just a little because bit. It, because there is no time, so you're playing different roles in different in different time space. But this body that we're seeing right now is playing this role. Yes, it, it, you know. And sometimes you wonder why <clears throat> why don't I feel right in this body? I, I I made a comment today to my friend Antonio, who is who is so much taller than me, and and we I posted a picture of us, and and I said to him, well, you know, I'm really as tall as you are. <laughs> <laughs> But my body hasn't, you know, <laughs> stopped before getting to the part where I imagine myself to be because, you know, I think of myself like I'm seven feet tall. But 
I'm only 5'2", my body is only 5'2", but I don't think I'm 5'2", so when I look at a picture, it's like, why am I so short in that picture? <laughs> you know, because I don't feel that short. That's what I imagine. When I walk in the room, I'm, I'm you know, I'm huge. <laughs> Do you know why I'm laughing? Because I have a friend who's a lot taller than me, and I don't actually see her as taller than me. I said, we're basically the same, aren't we? She says, are you out of your tree? <laughs> So, so yeah so we, we are who we say we are i am you know i'm very tall <laughs> whether you don't see it fake but yeah that's that's the whole thing is we say who we are yeah and when we start acting like that other people will start reacting to to who we say we are to our big notes <laughs> you know um I think what it's done for me, Alba, is it's made me realize it's actually okay to be me. Mm -hmm. And it's also taught me that there's absolutely nothing to fear. This is an adventure. Go and have a great time. What do you want to do? What do you feel like doing? Mm -hmm. You know, if today you feel like twin set and pearls, and the next day you want to dress like a rock chick because you do let's face it we don't want to look the same every day well i certainly no. don't no. i love experimenting and having a bit of fun it's just like a little wardrobe you know what i mean and it makes mm -hmm. you feel completely different yes so if people want to go with 10 studs in their tongue and purple mohican hair and 10 million tattoos let them be they just having a bit of a wardrobe change yeah. in physically or it, does it really matter does it really affect us doesn't it give us variety it does that's the that's what we were talking about in, in about your book uh the diff different colors of the rainbow you know we all are a different shade of blue or green um we're not all the same and you know you have to you have to be who you are you know th these sessions have changed me tremendously <clears throat> because I can't judge people the way I used to before. Correct. I, I see them as souls, especially when I'm doing sessions. You know, I have my eyes closed when I'm doing the sessions, and, and I, I'm soul to soul with them. So I see a totally different thing than, you know, I, sometimes I'll open my eyes. And it's like, oh, <laughs> there's a human being in front of me because you're so into the soul. It's, it's kind of interesting. Do but, you know, just to, to interrupt you, Alba, yeah. uh, you know, when my sister sent me that link in May, and I didn't know who you were, and she said to me, I don't know why I'm sending this to you, because basically I know nothing about this lady. Yeah. If, you, if it doesn't resonate, just discard it. And mm -hmm. I listened to it. My first thing was not, let's have a session with Alba. My first thing was, I need to get this lady to New Zealand to be a guest speaker, because what she's got to say and what she's doing needs to be heard that was my um first thought right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then when i looked at your website and i saw the new zealand and australian flag i thought i thought she was american, I thought she was american you know <laughs> you see how that worked but the mm -hmm. session that i watched mm -hmm was the one where the lady had the two entities and I think the guy's name was Benissimo who mm. had the bags and the girls and the money. Yeah, right? she was she was from Greece. Yes, but mm -hmm. that stopped me judging. That mm. one session. And I thought to myself, how can you ever judge anybody again? And I didn't know what you meant in your blurb when it said a transpersonal coach i think that's what the words were mm -hmm. and then i thought not only are you counseling right basically counseling this physical human body that's lying on the bed mm -hmm. but these entities that's right counseling them as well that's right and, them off. and that other entity that had made an agreement with the dark forces and there were mm -hmm. thousands of them 
Yeah. Suddenly I thought about ISIS and these people that were beheading people in the Middle East and I thought, so okay, Jill, you can't even judge them because mm. what entities obviously are attached to them because there's no way a normal, so-called normal person can go around beheading people and committing these huge atrocities. Mm -hmm. But yet there you were, like a surgeon, squabbing out all the septic and all the bits and pieces and getting thousands of them, thousands, mm -hmm. and sending them to the light. Alba, that yeah. is like huge. When, when I do those sessions, those are the most mind-blowing sessions that I had. have had. Um, there, there are many of them that are not shown on YouTube because they're very personal. Uh, the first one that was so mind-blowing was a, a woman from Rwanda who came to see me. And, you know, in Rwanda there was a massacres, yes. th you know, thousands and thousands. Of, oh, it was, it was horrible. And we did a mass lifting of the souls in that one. It was wild. Um, Hawaii when we had uh, Susan, Susan's session in Hawaii, we did the same thing to Hawaii. Uh, I did one which wasn't shown, uh, which had to do with, uh, in New York City, all of those souls that died uh, to the hands of the mafia that had cement shoes and were thrown in the river. And oh. um, yeah, yeah they, we had a lot of, a lot of uh, mafia-related killings in the in the 30s the you know the 1920s 30s and, the gangsters. Uh, yeah, yeah the gangs the gangsters yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we 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 had uh, we had a mass release so it's so amazing to be a part of that and and when i do that i, I mean i feel the energy uh it, it's just amazing when i feel that energy and and it, it's almost like a vortex going up and you know and they explain what it looks like that alone is mind blowing for me. So for yourself mm -hmm. doing these sessions, right? Yeah. Do you have to protect yourself in any way? I, I do I do a little meditation. I do I do a meditation before I start. I do a prayer. I call on my team. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't get so formal, you know. I don't think it's something we need to be so ritualistic in it. Um, you know, the protection is there. It, it's 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 instantaneous. You know that already. It's not because something I've that done anything. I believe if you work with the light, you'll be protected. And maybe that's naive. It's just. Well, I mean, I call in my team. It's it's just like as if you were to play a, a game of uh, football or you know whatever it is, and and you call in your team and okay, gang, you know this is what we're gonna do today, and we're gonna take care of Jill and. And, you know, I do that mentally. I do it, you know, quickly. But, and then afterwards, I, I thank them uh, the same way. But, um, you know, I, it takes me a while to get down myself after a session because I'm buzzing for about an hour after my session. So, you know, I have to also calm down too because the energy is just so much in me that goes through me. So, yeah, it affects me also. Yeah, it would. That's what I thought. Yeah. And you know, also the other things that have changed. Remember, they said in my session that you were going to be opening up that third eye fully. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm getting things when I least. I don't even. I don't even ask. I mean, I'm not even thinking about it. I'll be yeah. driving over the Crown Range to Queenstown on the other side of Wanaka, and suddenly the entire sky lights up in front of me with big puffy cloud letters and spell something and then a video starts playing in my head and I get shown and I realize that these are things now that I can be using as yeah. whole lessons and conversations for when I should be doing the speeches mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so it's not and then an example is um I was driving through that same valley after seeing a friend up there and it was very quiet midweek six o'clock the sky was set it was just beautiful and quiet and I was on a 50 zone coming into a 70 zone but I was really doing a 70 zone just before the 70 zone like I had, to, had like 50 meters to go and it's like no one's here I'm on cruise control right and out of the blue a cop car started coming towards me 
He looked at me, I looked at him, his brakes went on, and I went, you know what? You're going to get busted, right? Mm -hmm. So I said to Aurelius, hey guys, I don't actually have time for this. I don't really want to get busted. I don't want a ticket. I didn't, I'm not doing anything to anybody. There's nobody here. It's country. It's the country. I'm, you know, come on, really, do we have to end the day like this? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I looked in the rearview mirror because I knew he'd be turning around and he'd be following me. No cop. And I thought, where's the cop? <laughs> and then I went on a bit, where's the cop? And suddenly these cars just started coming where the cop had been coming towards me out of nowhere, right? Yeah. And I got home and I typed in and I said, like I always type when I'm, you know, doing my conversations with them and I said, what happened? Where, where did the cop go? Do you know what he said? We put him on a different timeline. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. And he said, uh, <coughs> you as human beings jump timelines and we're going to teach you how. He said, you can expand a day if you need more time and you can contract. So, so I told Greg about it and then he went to Japan and he arrived in Tokyo and he had to get onto another internal flight to get to the ski field. And he said, Jill, I had 45 minutes. Clear customs, get my bags. Mm -hmm. find the next thing, navigate through the airport and he said as it would be I'd be at the back of the plane and have to shuffle through everybody and he said I remembered what you told me and he he asked he said I actually got onto the other plane with 10 minutes to spare he said unheard of yeah but it happens all the time once you once you start asking for it, it it's incredible the other day I had a day off I had spent a whole month out traveling and I said, you know, I need to spend some time. And I kept looking at the time and I kept saying, this is the longest day <laughs> I have ever had. <laughs> I mean, it's not, the clock is not moving, you know, and I've done a million things today. How can that be? And that's what was happening. Every time I looked at the clock, it's like, did you not move? <laughs> Is that I not did like 50 things. But isn't that not truly creating your own reality? You are creating. You're manifesting all the time. And I, I learned about this. I had a, a really interesting experience. My first experience about the timeline changes where I had lost an earring one day. And I, it was one of my favorite earrings. And I thought I had dropped it in the car or I dropped it going to my sister's house. So I usually, I have a place where I put all my earrings and I came home and I, I hung it up, you know, without the pair. I hung it up there and I said, well, when I find it, I'll just put the other one there. About a month goes by. I said, you know what? I think I'm going to wear those earrings again. You know, I've for forgotten that I had lost the other pair. I opened up my cabinet and there were the pair. They were there, both. <laughs> I've had an experience the that was the first time that I had ever had a timeline shift that I was totally aware of. And I knew that that was a major turning point in my education about timelines and dimensions and that, because that was such a powerful experience, seeing that second earring there. It's incredible. Like, when it happens, you think you're losing your mind sometimes, but it's, it's incredible. Do you know, after I'd written the book and it was December, and they suddenly started speaking to me about Oprah Winfrey. And they said that, they said, you have a human called Oprah Winfrey, or they just said Oprah, mm -hmm. who um, will be putting on a film, a movie. And they said, next year it'll come out. They said, we implanted the idea into the director's head. And they said, Oprah heard the calling and responded. And they said, this film, and they brought it up because it was about the cop, right? And they said, this film is about time jumping and a space warp. Now, I didn't know anything about it. And they said that the sliver 
of a fly's wing can actually make a wrinkle in time. And they said that her following that she has will make sure that that film is going to be watched. Wow. And, they, and they said that as you, when you take people on safari, they will have a recalibration. Mm -hmm. if the people that watch the movie, not all of them, I suppose, but will have a recalibration. So I went to see the movie not knowing what it was about. And I went with two friends and I was sitting watching it and suddenly my body inside was like so weird and like, whoa, like, like this. And I thought, what the hell's going on? It happened about four or five times. Like waves? And, yes. And I said to them, how is that? How did that feel in your body? And they said, what are you talking about? So when I went home, I said, hey guys, what was that about? Do you know what they said? This I found fascinating. They said that those that have been now embedded with super hydrons into their DNA, DNA, not all DNA is the same, they said. You might think it is, but it's not. And they said, we speak of oscillation. And they said, when something oscillates, so if you put a metal plate and say you put stand on the metal plate, if you send it to a certain vibration, a pattern will emerge on the plate. If you change the vibration, a different pattern will emerge. And that's when you have your form and you take form and you have your dance and you have a different dance because the oscillation is different. Mm -hmm. so said, those who are light workers that watch that movie, Oprah's words will cause a recalibration in the form through they said her words are light encoded and they said it is a key that gets activated within the light workers to wake those up that have been slumbering and to the others that are awake to get them more tuned Automated. in. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. guess what? The cottage that I'm living in, right in front of me is the house where Oprah and Reese Witherspoon was staying last year while they were making that movie. It's like, wow, isn't it amazing? No, it's, it's you know the coincidences and the synchronicities are so much now that it, it, it's it's crazy, and, and and the same thing that you're saying is what some of these videos that I've been putting out that people are saying the same thing. <clears throat> They're receiving the 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 actual energy from from whatever is happening on the screen. There's been so many of them that have actually done energy work through the, the client that has been received by, by the people. And I've, I've even seen comments where their animals are being affected. You know, they're telling me that their animals are, are reacting to the videos. So there's something in the, in the energy that's being, you know, sent out. And you know, they said to me last week that they started speaking about what's called the rapture mm -hmm. and, the great, and the great leveler. And they said some people call it the rapture mm -hmm. and other people, they said, we like to call it the great leveler. Mm -hmm. And you know, they were saying that you've all got to really be authentic and be who you are. Okay. It doesn't matter about the diamonds and the pearls and the whatever. Yes, it's fun right. and you can have fun with it. But actually, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, it's what's inside. Yeah, it's yeah it's who you are. Said. And then I read something in NASA or somewhere where it said millions of years ago, it was almost like, I don't know if it was intergalactic warfare or some kind of energy. And it's caused that. And of course, energy never stops, right? So that is what's coming towards us. That is the energy. So I started thinking, is that what people call Nibiru? Is that what people call Planet X? What is this actual energy? And they spoke to me about it being a supersonic boom that is coming. And they said those people that have done the work, mm -hmm. that have lifted their vibrations, mm -hmm. that are embedded with the superhydrons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
will be able to withstand that energy. Mm -hmm. A lot of my sessions are saying that uh, some people are calling this the event. Uh, they're calling it by different names, but uh, bottom line, what we're hearing is you have to meditate. You have to know how to center yourself when this wave comes because it's going to be so powerful that people will lose it. You know, it's just so much. Um, well, they said they said that when it hits those that are not as centered or grounded, mm -hmm. it'll be like they are drugged mm -hmm. because the veils are going to be mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And they said those that are currently wearing cloaks very good that they've been wearing cloaks for a long time they said mm -hmm. because there will be no way for them to hide anymore they will be truly exposed to who they are mm -hmm. humanity is going to see where they really come from mm -hmm. and that is going to blow people's minds because they've been lied to yeah. Yeah. for so yeah. long and they're not going to know um, because that's been their own trust their own compass their own internal and that's not what it is. And so now they're going to have to be in themselves because the exterior is a load of bollocks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to know who you are. When this happens, you have to be able to find peace within yourself while those, this craziness is going on around you. Yes. That's, that's really the, the bottom line. That's why they keep telling people to meditate uh, because you have to be able to anchor yourself in... in, in in your own higher self you know you have to anchor yourself self-contained to be contained in self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're the one that's opening up all the little sparks the sparks the sparks are always there they just forgot they were there yeah yeah that, that, you know don't you think yeah it, it's it's in everybody and that's what's wonderful about having one of these sessions is when you finally come to face with yourself and you listen to your own higher self voice, it's mind boggling. It's, it's, it's you know, you remember. And, and if they continue the dialogue, like you, you do every day, if you continue the dialogue, you don't have to worry about anything. Everything comes to you. All of the, the information comes to you. All of the manifestations come to you. All of the opportunities come to you. You don't have to go out and, and, and work hard anymore. It's, you're manifesting. And it's such a different experience. You, people have to be in a state of bliss. That's really what we're here for. We're here to be in a state of bliss. In a state of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really maybe the true word of grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually... Um, knowing that it's actually fine and that it's a little miracle and there are little miracles that happen every single day but people don't realize that that thing that just happened was actually a miracle <laughs> and i was thinking about you again last night and i thought to myself because i knew this interview was coming up and i thought how do how do i make the most of this opportunity for you for those people that are going to still have that special time with you, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, yes, Jill Cole is a fine human being. Alba Weinman is a fine human being. There are many, many fine human beings. Mm -hmm. But without one another, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, as, I, as your client, gave you an opportunity to help me. So it's like a healer. You can't heal. Well, you never heal, but you're a conduit. So you can't heal somebody and let, uh, help them to heal unless you've got a patient. A doctor can't be your doctor unless he's got a patient. <laughs> right? right? So I couldn't be hypnotized without somebody being the person to hypnotize me. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't hypnotize anybody if you've got nobody lying there waiting to be hypnotized. And I think maybe that's what they meant when they said, work with the law of one. Mm -hmm. It was together, you are strong. Yeah. So if we 
give each other opportunities and support each other, mm -hmm. then we can say, hey, I want to see you shine. Let, let me see your light. Oh my gosh, you sparkle blue. And that's beautiful. But look at Alba, she's sparkling purple and white. And that's also beautiful. It's not more beautiful than another color. Mm -hmm. It's as beautiful as purple could ever be purple, as opposed to green being green. And mm -hmm. people trying to um, want to be purple. Mm -hmm. I want to be Beyonce. No, just who you are. You, you have to be who you are. Yeah, and yeah. that's what you do for people. You, you give them permission to learn how to be. To be a human being, not a human doing. That's, that's the most important thing. You have to be. Just be. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you get out of your session that was the most powerful thing? Um, it's, it's huge. It's so big to say the most powerful. I think maybe it was that I'm more than Jill, right? Yeah. That people get so bogged down in we've got to pay the mortgage and the kids are having a problem and all that sort of surface stuff. I think we get so caught up in the little, little, little things mm -hmm. that we forget that we are a spirit having a human experience and this is one adventure of a lifetime, lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So that made me realize that I walk around now looking at people going, I wish I could see your little hologram above you, like a little video playing to see who you really are, you know, rather than the Alba and the Jill and the Carol and the Tom and the Joe. So it's made me very tolerant, but it's given, you know what, Alba, I think what it really has done, it's given me my power, right? It's made me very powerful, but also very gentle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I've become more vulnerable. And those are great qualities to have. More vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. Because you're opening yourself up more. You don't have that, that, that shell, that, that shield in front of you. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and when you get to that point where you can allow yourself to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. and it's opening the heart. It's the opening of the heart. And actually, that's what the marriage, 35 years, and I didn't realize that actually I had a shield. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking and thinking, this is the most wonderful, wonderful man. Mm -hmm. How lucky am I? But now I'm letting him know that he's wonderful. And because I am, that's what I'm getting back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> and that's also, cool. I'm really loving my quiet time to myself. Mm -hmm. I felt guilty doing that before. Now I'm realizing that it's a definite. But there are too many things. How do you say which is the most fabulous from this experience? Because yeah. it just opens you from a little bud and suddenly you like this and the baby bird and you're just looking at everything. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, Paul. You're welcome. You're welcome. So tell me about these safaris. <gasps> now are you coming? Now you've got to decide whether you want to come just as like a guest and totally chill <laughs> or whether you want to actually come and do one group session on safari so it's something we need to talk about yes yes well tell everybody about the safaris without me in the middle of it and what your what your game plan is because that was a big part of your session at the end was this safari well that safari idea that they said they put into my head which i was confident was definitely my own so that's something i've been thinking about for a very long time but because I've got such a connection to that land and having lived there and just absolutely love that area, 
mm. and just keep on going back. And with my sister having a hundred year old farmhouse and a hundred year old garden, I put a long, low, slow lunch under those big, big trees and, and make it authentic and genuine. And mm. yes, I can take anybody and I'm happy to share that with, of course, anybody. Mm. But I really want, would like, and maybe other the people that are meant to come will just come, mm -hmm. right? But I want to give them a non-tourist, fabulous, and I thought Cape Town, we could do art, food, and wine, and then go onto the safari and absolutely be and talk around the campfire and just, mm -hmm. and, and also I think it's important for a lot of directors, wives, and company wives mm -hmm. to go on safari. And I think companies need to, um, to give back to the wives, or maybe in some case, husbands who actually are now house husbands for mm -hmm. these women who are big executives. You know, Alba, I was thinking, without the support of that spouse, mm -hmm. that company's bottom line wouldn't be the same. No. Because it must cause such friction in marriages mm -hmm. where you've got them always looking after the company line, the bottom line, and the pressure and the time away and the stress and everything and being able to go home to that wife or that husband that's looking after that spouse that the home's been running smoothly it's somewhere where they can relax shouldn't you reward that lady or that man or what about the couple together so that they can go to a place where these the cell phones aren't going it's not crazy it's quiet they can recalibrate not only within themselves but together mm -hmm. and then go back and she'll go wow I've actually appreciated yeah and, well, the, and the land the land will, re will recalibrate them yes the grounding yes yes so I'm going to um, Auckland next week or the week after and speak to some wholesalers because what I'm trying to do is give as best value as possible so that the person, I don't think they care whether they go a thousand thread count, you know, as long as it's clean and good and the food's great, it doesn't have to be five star, but it's got to be, it's the experience that they want, you know, and safety in that area, it's fine, it's safe, it's the cities and the other areas that aren't, and they're not going to be going there. They're going to be flying straight into one area and then straight into that bush area. So mm -hmm. safety is paramount as far as I'm concerned for them. It but is. you know, if, this, if the big spirits are floating around want all this to happen, I can't see that they would put these huge bishops in the way. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get out of the middle man, go directly to the source and make us economic as possible that's really what I'm working on at the moment that's wonderful that's great well, I hope there's, yeah it's exciting it's exciting and uh, you know that's one of my dreams also is to have more retreats um, with people that's one of my dreams is to be able to uh, get together the people who are in the tribe because when people come to me um, they say I'm, I'm all alone I said no you're not I know where all the tribe is I know who they are they're yeah. out there, I, you know, and uh, I'd like to be able to, to gather these people in a place where they can just talk. They could just be with their, their tribe, you know, that's but what people that's want. That's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. now, maybe we do a, a tribal retreat in Africa as well for all those ones that can just talk. Because, yes, it is lonely. It's, it's terribly lonely. It's very lonely to be in the spiritual world where nobody understands you nobody can can empathize with you with these people don't want to be in big crowds unless they're people who are like them you know and they, they aren't getting all that static from them and that's that's my dream is to be able to get people together around the world in different spots where we can just be just be human beings and yes. and and it doesn't have to be anything fancy it's a place where we can get to get together. People can meet other people, form friendships. 
I think and you don't have to explain anything because people didn't understand. Because I can't do the superficial chit chat anymore. I just mm. can't. It just it, to me, it's like we. And that's what I spoke to you uh, when in my book about you know the sex and the religion. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, people. They just don't say. Is it because they don't even know who they really are? No, they don't. I don't no, want no. the latest fiction, the latest movie, and those. It, I call those the seeds that are still underground. They're still underground. They still haven't come up. They're still in the dark. But all of those that have awakened, and they're saying, "I just don't know who to talk to anymore. I don't know. Who, I I just want to talk to somebody about this stuff and not feel afraid of talking." And um, I've got thousands of them, you know. I've I've got a big mailing list of thousands of them that that want to talk to each other and and feel safe, feel, feel well, safe being themselves. Elba, just do an Elba conference. Mm-hmm. Just do an Elba conference with all the people that if you've you know had, yeah, and that's right. a safe place to land. It has to be a safe place, yeah, because that's what they want. They want to be able to go there and not have to worry about doing the chit-chatting, uh, how's the weather. You know, they don't want to talk about that. <laughs> they want to talk, talk about soul matters. They will gravitate automatically yeah. to those on their bandwidth. Mm-hmm. And who knows what magic will happen then. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's everybody has their own little tribes depending on what they're interested in. But the ones that are coming to me are, are on my wavelength. You know, so it's cool. So the safari is going to be amazing like that too. And the other thing that I've, you've given me the um, to be brave, right? Mm-hmm. So I've decided I'm going to start something locally. Like, you know, like they've got a TED Talks. Yes. So I'm going to start locally Wanaka Talks. So not mm-hmm. just a Wanaka Talk, but it's like Wanaka's Talking, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But I want it to start with saying, have you had a near-death experience? Do you know somebody that has an experience that you can't explain? Right. Pulling all of them out of the woodwork. And of course, being a smaller little town, most people know each other. And giving them permission to be in a little place, <clears throat> whether it's a cafe that's open only in the day and you can use it at night just you know sit and have canapes and whatever um and let people start thinking other people going wow okay so that happened to somebody else as well because i think a lot of people are having experiences but they think that they're going crazy and maybe nobody's going to believe them right 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 or well, yeah well that's what the videos are helping with is that they're seeing that other people are having experiences like like they are and it's helping them at least it's like a mirror for them they understand that we're all we're all one we're just different aspects of each other yes. and you know and when you when you see something that you resonate with it's it's just an aspect of you and you know it's safe to 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 see that in, in a person and discuss it with them because you it's talking to you <laughs> it's really but that's why you are so fabulous because mm-hmm. that you've actually put this on video mm-hmm. i have now been able if i have a conversation with people and they like mm-hmm. you know um and i'll go look i don't care whether you believe or not right you know but so many people feel they have an opinion without any research mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you know what i mean which yes. is fine but I've said to them, just type in Alba Wynum, go to that session, that Benissimo, whatever. <laughs> I said, you know, listen to it and to Geraldine. I said, if you listen to those sessions, mm-hmm. then come back and have a conversation with me mm-hmm. and tell me how is that possible. How would you like to explain that? Right. And right. that's why I like the university with the medical faculty and the spirit joining. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. when those people who are science minded, mm-hmm. like, Ooh, how the hell did this happen? When those people aren't even educated. <laughs> yes. That's yes. when the magic's going to happen. Yes, yes. 
Well, we've talked a lot, and it's uh, I could talk to you for hours, obviously, but uh, it was great. We'll talk again, all right, about the safari. And Thank you, uh, any any closing words for anybody out there who's wondering about anything about uh, you or me or anything you have to say for closing? Yes, I think it should be said, Alba, that um, they need to take it seriously if they have a session with you. Uh, they have to do the homework. They have to meditate if they want the very best. It's a one in a lifetime chance. You know, you're, getting, you're not getting slower, you're getting busier. So, yes, they might have a chance with somebody else. It's not going to be the same experience because the more you do, the more experienced you are, the more you can give, correct? That's just the way it is. Yeah. So, um, I personally feel, I wish there was a magic way where you could meet many, 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 as they said, many, many more and that you could just split yourself up because I think you are, what do they say, doing God's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I just feel I was very, very, very fortunate with those bizarre set of circumstances yeah. uh, that led me to you. And I highly recommend it. And yes, not everybody's got to go on video. And I think it doesn't actually matter if you're on video or not because it's a personal experience, it will change you forever. Yes, it will, it will. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And I send you my love, and I wish I could hug you, you know, I send you a virtual hug. <laughs> oh, oh, as you can see, we had snow. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I see you sleeveless, not yes. gonna happen here. <laughs> no, no, I'll have to go there in my winter time next time, so I don't, I don't get so cold. Uh, and Alba, next time you come, really make time for this area. I'll host you. Mm -hmm. and love it. It's beautiful. I, I saw it from overhead and it looked great. I yeah, saw no, it from the airplane yeah. and it's a beautiful place. Well, thank so you very much. Good evening. Huh? I said, have a lovely evening. Thank you and have a good morning. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, until the yeah. next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.